People who have had their life spared at the cost of someone else's how do you feel about your life now? My brother died trying to save my life. We had went hiking just the two of us on a pro D day from school. I was 11, he was 13. I ended up slipping on some shale and fell off a 30 meters, 100 foot cliff. My brother tried to climb down to get me, but also fell and died at the scene. I had so much guilt as a teen he was the more popular child I felt like out of the two of us, I should have been the one to go. Now, many years later I get sucked into internal monologues, where I wonder how my life would be if the accident didn't happen. Would my brother be a dad, married, would we still be best friends? I have a totally different personality now, brain injury, and if I had my old one, I know I would be on a totally different life plan and I would never have met my soulmate. So I have more guilt, because if you ask me, if I could go back and not fall and all the horrible stuff that came with it I don't know. I never would have met my husband, and he has made my life amazing. I'm forever indebted to my brother for making the sacrifice he made, and miss him dearly. I hope my future children have a relationship like the one my brother and I had. When in the military I lived, because my best friend died. I watched him die in the gasoline fire that followed an IED explosion on our vehicle. My gear was stuck on a piece of metal that had lodged itself next to me. I couldn't get loose, and my arm was twisted so hard I thought it was going to break if I moved. He was out of the vehicle on the other side when he heard me scream in pain. By then the fire was licking my entire right side, towards the middle of the vehicle. He jumped back in, into the fire freed me and pushed me out. He then got stuck himself and died inside. I lived in pain for a long time. I could spend days at his grave, not knowing what else to do. I hated myself because I thought and to some degree still think that I was supposed to die, not him. He had a family, a kid, a wife. I didn't. He was a better person than I will ever be. He was an exemplary service member. I wasn't. He deserved it all and got nothing. Instead I got it. A troublemaker with much less to live for than him. Today, I try to honor his memory by living well and living to the fullest. I have speed bumps like everyone else, but I try to keep my road ahead of me clear. I've sorted my life out, I'm happy and accepting of myself, and I try to remember that it was his choice. He made the decision to save me, nobody else. He paid the ultimate price, and for that I will always respect him and be thankful. His family do not blame me, even though I wouldn't blame them in return if they did. They understand my struggle with it, and we do our best to support each other. In a way we are closer than we could ever have been due to the circumstances. Here's my tip to all of you out there, don't dwell on what ifs, and what could have been. Make the best of, and appreciate what you got instead. You can't change the past, and you can't predict the future, but you can make the most out of all of it, if you want to. As a child, my parents sent me for help, read, my mother shoved me out the front door, while they attempted to battle a localized fire in our Christmas tree. Moments after I left the house, there was a flashover in the home, and the resulting sudden blaze filled the house with smoke, as the neighbors kept me from returning outside, fearing the worst. I will be forever thankful to those neighbors, as they did their best to accommodate a young boy on Christmas morning, even wearing his night shirt with scraped up feet. The fire took the life of both of my parents and my little brother. Survivor's guilt is a very real thing. I blamed myself for a very long time. But now, I have accepted what happened as an accident. I try to live each day and make the most of it, as I view myself as lucky to be alive. It never really leaves you, but it gets better. In Afghanistan, I was trying to spot a Taliban machine gun position when my best friend tapped me and sent me to check our VHF collection system with our interpreter to see if any other Taliban were coming to take shots at us. My buddy took my vantage point and less than a minute later was hit by one of several RPGs fired at us. Six years later, and I still think about him every day, visit his grave when I can, and plan on naming my first kid after him, permitting it's a boy. This is just a throwaway account. When I was about 7 years old I moved to a ghetto from another ghetto that I grew up in. I ended up living with my mom, siblings, and aunt. One of the siblings I just met when I moved there because he was my half brother from my dad's side and he was living with my aunt. He was also in his 20s. 
Anyway over the months I was there I got to know my new brother very well. I knew he was involved gangs and just doing the wrong things, but he always told me to stay away from it. He was the only male remodel in my life that I could depend on. One day I wanted to go to the store to get some food and I asked him to come along with me. He said that he was too tired and just wanted to rest. I continued to beg him to come until he finally agreed. As we are walking back from the store this car pulls up next to us. I look over and see three guys get out of the car and are looking at my brother. My brother then turns to me and yells at me to run back home. I was in shock though, so I just stood there. He proceeded to shove me and I fell down to the ground. He told me once again to just run home. So I start running away. I'm not sure why I did, but I stopped around the corner and was trying to see what was going on. When I turned around to see what was happening, I saw my brother on his knees and crying. I couldn't hear what they were talking about. Then out of nowhere one of the guys pulls out a gun and just shoots him point blank. I just stood there as I watched them get into the car and drive off while his body is there lifeless without making a single move. I didn't know what to do. I just remembered that he told me to go home, so I did. I didn't run over to him. I just left. That day he saved my life at the cost of his. I blamed myself for a long time. I kept on thinking to myself, why did I make him come with me to get food? I just couldn't get over the fact that it was my fault. I still kind of do blame myself, but I know I shouldn't. It could have happened a day when I wasn't with him, but I was with him, so I blamed myself. I will never forget what he said to me, Amber Tuts, don't you ever get involved with the wrong people. Go make something of yourself. Your mom is a smart woman and I know it will rub off on you. I ruined my life early on, so there's nothing I can do now, but you still have a chance. Go to school and make an honest living. I love you, and I will always do anything to keep you and your family safe. Please take this advice and use it. I did take his advice. I worked so hard, so I would never have to go back to the ghettos again. I'm currently working on my masters with a awesome job that pays well, and I'm able to take care of my family because of it. I think about him almost every day. I use that to drive me to make something better for my family and myself. I never take anything for granted, because every day is worth living. Just know that there is always someone out there that wants slash needs you to be alive. I miss him. I'm the youngest of seven. I'm the only one alive today. My mother had a series of miscarriages and stillbirths when her and my father were trying to start a family. Every attempt ended with a frail and fragile baby that was too weak to survive out of the womb. I was the last attempt as doctors warned my mom that her reproductive system has been damaged by the earlier attempts. I was a twin. He came out first, but did not survive birth as he was deformed and sick. We came out premature at 6 months. I came out frail as well but I survived. I was raised with so much love from my parents, but they never told me how I was the only survivor. I learned of this after overhearing a conversation my mom was having with my aunts. Since then I have honor their memory, but at the same time I think of how, if any of the earlier attempts had succeeded I probably would not have been born. Oh yeah this directly applies to me. I'm 15 and had a heart transplant when I was about 6 months old. The heart was from a 3 year old who got in a car crash with his parents. He died, but his heart was still perfectly intact. I was on the waiting list for about 1 week, and then I got the transplant. All I can say is I'm extremely fucking grateful, and I just feel like I'm way I too lucky. Okay, so this happened about 3 years ago. My girlfriend and I were enjoying a night out. No special occasion or anything, just a regular date night. We had been together 2 years at the time. So, we were walking around downtown, had a great night, and I didn't really want to go back to the car yet. My girlfriend just wanted to go home, but I eventually convinced her to walk around with me and explore the city a bit. I really don't know what I was thinking. I just felt adventurous that night and wanted to see something I hadn't before. I don't think I even need to tell you that a skinny white guy from the suburbs walking around with an equally skinny girl make tempting targets. We were walking, joking, both of us were enjoying ourselves, exploring any abandoned buildings we came across. Then, as we were walking, we happened across some junkie who was hopped on meth or something. He demands our phones slash wallets. 
I planned on cooperating, because I had no gun on me, and no interest to put myself or her in danger for a few hundred bucks worth of stuff. I really don't know what happened next. I was really nervous and maybe I reached for my wallet too fast for his liking, or he thought I had a gun or something. Either way, the same thing happened, he lunged at me. I likely would have died, but my girlfriend threw herself between us without thinking. He stabbed her 12 times, while all I could really do was watch. I didn't even try to stop him. I was just completely frozen. She took immediate action to save my life and I couldn't even move a muscle to help save hers. Once he was done he turned to me, and I just bolted, and was able to escape. It hurts just writing that out, because I hate myself so much, and feel so much shame for how I acted that night. I was such a fucking coward and the love of my life died because of it. She was such a better person than I'll ever be. Beautiful, brave, smart, caring, and now she's dead, while I'm still alive. For what? I don't even know. I still think about it almost every night. The only thing that has prevented me from killing myself is knowing that if I do she will have died for nothing. I wish I could have died in her place. If I had actually taken action maybe we both would have still been alive. But I didn't so the better person died and I'll never see her again. I've been trying to live my life for others as much as possible to make up for that day but it has been so damn hard. At this point I'm just trying to be a man she would be proud of, and to make sure her sacrifice was worth it. Back in grade 7, during spring break, I took a trip with my best friend to Tel Aviv, because his uncle was getting married. We were rounding out the trip one night, walking back to his family's house. He ended up telling me that he would be moving, when the school year was over due to his father's job, and we'd probably never see each other again. I got so angry, I yelled at him calling him a jerk, and insulting one of the only friendships I've ever had as a kid. I remember Tyre screeching, and then my friend grabbed me by my collar, and pushed me to the ground. There was a drive-by. My friend, the one friend I made during middle school, spared the life of a so-called friend who was berating him at that moment. Two fully automatic rifles later, and the front of the house was shot up. I was hysteric. His uncle and grandfather came out of the house to see me on the ground over his lifeless body. When I tried talking about this to my counselors at school, but they were more sympathetic than empathetic and gave me the entire at least you're alive spiel. I hated myself more and more every time they said that. There was no reason for me to be alive if it was at the cost of my friend's life. I couldn't luck my friend's father in his face and tell him he died saving my life. I sheltered myself from making friendships for almost a decade because I was afraid something like that would happen again. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but I had so many triggers and my rage during the moment just felt like it added up to something. It's been about 9 years now, and I can say that I'm able to speak about this to people just recently. It's been a very emotional part of my life. I usually tend to reserve it for really close friends, as something like that isn't something you drop in during casual conversation with strangers. I still suffer from survivor's guilt and PTSD. A lot of things are triggers, anything resembling gunshots is still pretty bad, and from a development perspective, I'm scared to stand up for what I believe in, because I associate it with that event. I believe that I'm on a track to recovery, because that event is just that, an event. It may be a significant one, but it doesn't define me, who I am, and what I'm capable of. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.